and welcome to this episode of Flickering Dreams. Uh, this is episode number 73 and it is our weekly cinema cafe, cafe? cafe episode. And joining me are um, the usual Fab Free plus me, Emma Sewell of Emma at the Movies on X slash Twitter slash wherever, Andy Godfrey from Sorted Magazine and Connect Radio with a K, and Scott Forbes from the Forbes Film and TV Review on Facebook. And uh, we've got the usual stuff in this episode. We uh, take a look at some of the other films we haven't done as special features this week. Uh, we have our film quiz, which you could play along with at home. Uh, we've got our top 10 at the box office. And uh, we look at some of the films which are coming out in the next week. So let's um, just start with some of those films which we didn't get to feature. I should say the films that you can find us reviewing as special editions are Monkey Man with uh, Dev Patel, The Trouble with Jessica, a new black uh, British comedy and Scoop on Netflix, the film about the Prince Andrew, Emily Maitlis uh, interview on Newsnight. Um, any others we've seen? I, Andy, I believe uh, you and Emma have both seen a film called Seize Them. Yeah. No, I, didn't, actually... I sadly didn't get to see this one. It's oh, not didn't? showing okay. it. No, it's not showing at my cine world. And I had a feeling that while I would probably enjoy it, I wouldn't want to spend twelve pounds on it at Showcase. Oh, I'm sorry, I've, I've noted that down. Like, <laughs> I have yes, seen I, it. I, you have seen it. I've got, <laughs> I've I've got a little, it. I've got a little clip to show. Here, here's a little clip from Seize Them. Seize Them. When I was a girl, I watched my father punish traitors. He would cleave off their arms and shove them up their asses. That's nice. And then he would cleave off their asses and shove those up, whatever <laughs> remained. Greetings, peasants! Your queen needs clothes. My name is Bobbick. We'll walk to Fingerstone Rock <laughs> to find new soldiers for the queen. You're gonna need a horse. They all died. A dragon, then? Yeah, they're not real. <laughs> Cough. <laughs> uh, I have to say the trailer made me laugh, Andy. <laughs> it's um, uh, is this made by the same guys as Horrible Histories? Exactly. This is a Horrible Histories production, except right. that it's a fifteen certificate because of yeah. language and also because of an excessive amount tell. of gore. Now, I did <laughs> laugh all the way through. This is a uh, this is a fifteen certificate, but it's very it smashed the six laugh test. Um, Nick Frost plays the ultimate uh, shit. Spreader, and that's his job. <laughs> and uh, we have a queen who's been dethroned, and she's heading to the coast to meet with cousins, who she hopes is going to help her get her country back. It's a little bit uneven. It's not hilariously funny all the way through. There are moments when you just think, "Oh, get on with it." It's a little bit Monty Python in that there's some animation in there um, to illustrate a chase that's happening, rather than seeing the chase as an animated characters being chased. No. It is very, very funny. It's very sharp, but it is a bit uneven. I wonder if they would have got more bums on seats if they had actually gone for a 12A using the same story and the same characters, to be honest, because we know kids love horrible histories. We know horrible histories is a big success, um, but nobody under the age of 15 legally can go in and see this. And I just wonder if they haven't shot themselves in the foot financially by not you know, they've tried to make a horrible history for adults, as it were. But I think that they might have had more appeal um, if if they'd gone for a 12A. As it is, it is what it is. I enjoyed it. I laughed more than, out loud more than six times, mostly at the uh, at Nick Frost's character. I mean, that great line about not believing dragons don't exist that you've just seen in the trailer. <laughs> very, yeah. very funny. Very typical of the script. So overall, it was a, it was a, it was a seven out of ten for me. Okay, okay. Uh, the the lead character there was played by Amy Lou Wood. I was yes. struggling to remember where I'd seen her, and of course she was the tea uh, serving girl in that uh, Bill Nye film from a couple of years ago, Living, wasn't it? Oh, of course she was. That's right. <laughs> that, yes, I mean that was where. I yeah, was, I, was I was looking at that trailer, thinking, "Where yeah. have I seen her before?" I just had yeah, to look I mean, her up. She, she plays the wicked queen of of the West, and basically finds some sort of redemption yeah. as the story proceeds, but. 
it's all the story's all pretty obvious, but the fun is to be had in the one liners and particularly in Nick Frost's delivery yeah. of them. Yeah. yeah. I remember I remember re- recently on a, another flight, I can't remember where I was going, I, I put on the Horrible Histories Roman film uh, from a couple of years ago. I yes. have to say, I laughed like a drain yeah. through most of oh, that I think uh, I think you flight. would laugh like a drain through this, but I do okay. just wonder if, if in terms of going for a slightly more adult audience, <laughs> they could have told the same story with the same set of characters with a lot of the same jokes. If they just yeah. toned it down a bit, they might have got a wider audience, particularly as it come out during the Easter holidays. That's yes, my only yes. observation. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, another film which, uh, and I, I think I'm right now in saying that Emma and Andy, you've seen this this week, is the first Omen. Here's a clip of that. What did you make of this one, Andy? I love the Omen films. I'm always interested as a reverend to see what Hollywood does with, with the Book of Revelation. Um, this one has got nothing whatsoever to do with the Book of Revelation. This is a pre- prequel. Uh, we basically get the questions answered as to the circumstances of Damien's birth from the First Omen film, and it leads directly at the end into the start of the First Omen. Stupid title, absolutely unbelievably stupid title. They could have called this Omen Origins, you know, origin, Omen, omen the, beginning. the Beginning. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> stupid title. It's fine. It is exactly the same plot as Immaculate. Somebody was looking over somebody's shoulder and copying during the exam because they have written down the same answers. It is the same. I mean, really, except this one's got an Omen twist. There's a couple of shots. There's one death in particular that really relates back to the first, uh, the, I keep saying it, the, the first omen, <laughs> the original omen. Um, the first, first omen. The, the first, mean. first omen. And there's one death that relates back to that. I missed the Jerry Goldsmith chanting Latin score from the first film, which really was the scariest thing about the first film, that score. Yeah, I agree. You listen I to agree. that in isolation, as I've done <laughs> on your own on a dark night. That score yes. is is just chilling. The Jerry yeah. Evans score. I enjoyed it, but it is immaculate too. Okay. Um, and, that said, and, it's nice to get questions you... answered that I've been asking since 1976, when <laughs> the first one came out, Emma. <laughs> Emma? Yeah, I, um, I, everyone that's asked me, it, it tends to be a thing at work at lunch, that, like everyone will go <laughs> and say, what did you watch at the weekend? What's good? I was like, oh, I watched Immaculate 2, the first omen. <laughs> and they looked at me as if I'd gone crazy. And I was like, if you went and saw the other one last week when I told you about it, this one's better. Um, <laughs> I was so confused at the beginning because genuinely they're exactly the same. Um, but as I say, in my opinion, this one is much better um, than <laughs> Immaculate oh. was. Um, the only thing I would say is that I really didn't think Bill Nye was the, <laughs> the one to choose for this film. Bill Nye is in this, is he? Bill Nye plays a priest with a very interesting view on religion and life and the church and the apocalypse. <laughs> but he's just That's very you realize, Bill you Nye realize about is, it. You realise this is the second week in a row where we've brought up Bill Nye as being miscast in a film, so... <laughs> Yeah, I think the I first one, one was the beautiful game from some, last week. Yeah. He clearly <laughs> needs the <some> money. <laughs> yeah, I, I genuinely, although yeah, it wasn't one of my favourite films ever, but the only really down point to this, I thought, was his casting. And I think just because you're so familiar with him and the fact that he just acts in exactly the same way, which works in a lot of the other films he does. It just really put me off. Yeah, apart from apart from that, I really did enjoy this one. I thought it was really nicely done. Good, good. Okay. Um, scores out of 10 from both of you. We haven't done a proper review, but we, we might as well. Go on, Emma. Um, so I, I oh, seven. I mean, I'm giving this a seven as well. I, I enjoyed Immaculate more, so it's really interesting, isn't it? Bearing in mind, I'm a massive fan of the first Omen film. Um, okay. I gave it a, a seven. Yeah. Right. So that's a seven point zero borderline, borderline hit. What, right. <laughs> what I will, and I, I really need to share this bit of information. So obviously, um, went to see it. Quite a lot of people there. On the way yeah. out, there was a, a couple of women who'd been sitting just like slightly further across 
in the screen coming out behind us. And one of them went, well, I don't understand why they're called the Kid Damien. I was like, what? 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 And I just, I was, I, I thought I misheard Sorry, it. And what? then <laughs> I, thought, I genuinely thought, no, no, that's not what she said. And then she reiterated it again to her friends. And I walked out. I was like, don't say anything. Just don't, just <laughs> keep your mouth shut and just leave. I would have. <laughs> Because the kid in the first omen, the Antichrist, is called Damien. And this is mm. about the birth of Damien. <laughs> what? Maybe she's never seen it. Maybe she's oh. never seen it. Okay. I mean, um, but, like, even I haven't seen the first one. Oh, you need to see uh, the and, first oh. And I, I know the kid's name is Damien. <laughs> Damien Have you seen the yeah. remake, Emma? Because they did a remake of the first one. A shot for shot remake two years ago. But you do need so. to see the first one. It's a horror classic. It is what a horror classic. Pa- what happens Gregory to Patrick? Peck. Gregory Peck. What happens to whose picture is in this film? You see Gregory oh. Peck's photograph in this film. What oh, happens right. to Patrick Froughton in the first film? You'd love it, Emma. <laughs> he really, he really gets the point. <laughs> he does get the point. Yeah, almost a hot fuzz mm. moment. Yes. <laughs> you need um, to see the first one, Emma. I'll bite you for good. Okay. <laughs> the 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 only other film here I've got written down that somebody else has seen this week is Mega Mind versus the Doom Syndicate that Emma raised, oh. which which I almost daren't ask where you saw this, or indeed why. <laughs> <laughs> so so many questions um, came up because of this film. Uh, it was. I mean, it must have hit now, cinema, I think, so Sky. And I was like, oh, oh, another sequel. Well, I liked the first Megamind, kind of. Um, (laughs) Oh, it's trash. It's so much trash. Say Um, no more. Let's let's pass it by. (laughs) Let's erase it from history. (laughs) (laughs) You could do. There's so much bad CGI that just one delete button away from saving the world. Good, good. Uh, right, let's jump into our film quiz then. And uh, we've got we to do this. Yeah, we do. Uh... It's the law. <laughs> so we're going to do our film quiz. Uh, and this is the dialogue schmilogue version of it, oh. where what I'm going to do is I'm going to give five lines of dialogue from a film. Uh, the film is in the top 1,000 box office films of <clears> all time. And you have to try and guess, before we get to the last one, which film it is. Um, I have taken a little, little bit of pity on you in this v- edition, Thanks. in that as well as giving you the line of dialogue, I'm also giving you the actor who says that line of dialogue. So there's a little bit more information in this version. I mean, that just makes me feel like it's even more difficult. Yeah, it won't help at all. <laughs> <laughs> For why? For why? No, right. Uh, okay. My mind goes to mush. It doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so let me share my screen. And um, so here comes the first one. And and there is no penalty for a wrong answer in this version. Oh, so you can, you can write down five, five different films if you want to. And we'll take the top one that's correct or not. <laughs> so for those listening on audio, uh, the line one is, who are we? Are we simply what others want us to be? Are we destined to a fate beyond our control? Or can we evolve, become something more? And that was spoken by Sophie Turner. <laughs> now, I've written an answer I, down. I don't, I don't feel it's right. <laughs> <laughs> because I've, a, I've only got one screen. I can't see your faces this week. So, you know. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go on to line, to line two. Here it comes. Jessica Chastain says, this truly is an unfortunate development. Scott Shepard says, why? Why is that? And Jessica Chastain says, it's so much easier to understand your language when you're not screaming. Does that help at all? No. (laughs) 
Okay. I'm loving that you've got the actors, Bob, because I think I got this in the first one. Right. Damn Even it. if I don't know the quotes. Okay. Well, we'll see. And here comes line number three. You're always sorry, Charles, and there's always a speech, <laughs> but nobody cares anymore. Michael Fassbender. Are you still confident, Scott? Yeah. Yeah, he's very confident. How about you, Andy? I'm veering between two. Okay. Here comes line number four. And by the way, the women are always saving the men around here. You might want to think about changing the name to X women Jennifer Lawrence. Well, I'm in the right ballpark. <laughs> <laughs> right. The right, the in... right franchise. <laughs> the right franchise. Well, I think I kind of gave it away there. <laughs> okay. And the final line, your final clue. Line five, that's not what Raven would have wanted. You know that, you both do. And that was said by Ty Sheridan. Oh, which one do I go for? Okay. <laughs> have you written an answer yeah. down, Andy? I've written two down. <laughs> I've written one okay. down after the first. I wrote one down after the first one. Okay. And I wrote one down at number three. Okay. And are you ready to reveal the answer? <sighs> Are you I'm all done? Go... I can't. I can't. Yeah, I can't see. Go for yeah. it. I'm going to go X Men, mm. and not X Men Apocalypse, which it probably will turn out to be. Okay, and the answer is X Men Dark Phoenix. Dark Phoenix. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, I guessed it on uh, one. And it's that's number six hundred and seventy. In I'm the... really surprised. Like. I wrote that down and generally thought everyone hated it so much that it was not. Yeah, that's not why I didn't that go list. for that one. <laughs> Always the way. <laughs> Whichever one I wrote down was going to be the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> but because I, I couldn't believe I couldn't believe that Dark Phoenix would would rank quite as high as that. I just thought nobody I would think see it wasn't that. Wasn't as bad as people but... think. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did really enjoy it. <laughs> Okay, um, let's be move honest, on I don't really and take a look while we're still in uh, presentation mode of uh, the box office top 10 for this week. So this is up to the 8th of April and uh, still at number one, second week on release, it's Kung Fu Panda 4, which um, I think, Emma, you're the only one who's actually seen this. I uh, don't think you in last week's show. No, no, no. I, it, I, it wasn't good. Like I, it was not good, but I will say that everyone at work again <laughs> sat down and had that conversation, and they were all like, oh, "Yeah, Kung Fu Panda Four. They all went oh, and saw it. There you are. Well, the kids Since clearly I, like I've it. I've seen it, and they're all but, like, "You're um, wrong, Emma. It's so, so good." Two weeks in the chart. <laughs> Excuse me. It's nearly made thirteen million pounds. Indeed. Um, Ten million of that got put on last week, so it's fallen like a stone this week. I have to say, but it's still made it to number one. Number two, uh, Godzilla X Kong. Godzilla multiplied by Kong equals the threat new empire. Uh, again, that's made over £9 million in its two weeks. Um, uh, and number three, we've got Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. So that's two films with empire in the title uh, within one place of each other. Uh, again, we were not mad keen on Ghostbusters, I have to say, overall. Speak for yourself. Yes, speak for yourself. Yeah, I knew you'd say that. Emma. That's made over twelve million. At number four, still doing good business is June Part Two, over thirty-six million pounds. We definitely rated June Part Two. And number five is the film that we reviewed this week, uh, which was Monkey Man with Dev Patel. Uh, number six is a film we mentioned a few minutes ago, The First Omen. Uh, curiously, at the Walt Disney Studio, but uh, that's it. That's his first week in the chart, over <laughs> half a million pounds. And number seven, still in the charts, uh, 10 weeks in the chart, is Migration, the DreamWorks animation. Why? And that's uh, nearly 21 million pounds. The kids clearly love it. they keep screening it. it. <laughs> yeah. Um, struggling in at number eight is that film we also talked about a bit earlier, Season, 
with an exclamation mark. <laughs> uh, I love I love films with exclamation marks in the title. We should do a special on films with exclamation marks in the title. Mother. <laughs> Hail Caesar. Yeah. Uh, that's only made 132k at the box office. Um, I think, as you were saying, Andy, if that had been a 12, uh, that might have done more business during the uh, holidays. Yeah. And number so. nine. Uh, still doing good business is Wicked Little Letters with a sweary Olivia Coleman. Uh, that's made over £9 million at the box office. And uh, at number 10 is a Walt Disney re-release. Well, I say re-release, it never had a release in on the big screen because it's a lockdown film from Disney. But that's Luca. And uh, that crawls in at the number 10 position. So that's our top 10 for this week. Just looking um, at the new films coming out this week, Andy is about to rush off and see one of those, which <laughs> is Civil War. Civil War. And I, unfortunately, without thinking in a very senior moment, <laughs> I've booked it in 4DX. <laughs> but I have to be on the radio at nine o'clock on Friday morning Hang reviewing it. So. Let me get you ready for it. Here it comes. Yeah. Oh. We've had enough shaky camera work tonight, Bob. <laughs> We've had enough shaky camera work tonight to last a lifetime. Oh, I, I'm not really looking forward to the 4DX, but I am looking forward to the film because I do like Alex Garland's stuff. I do. I, I do as well. I think he's, yes. I think he's an excellent writer, excellent director, brilliant yeah. filmmaker. I'm, I'm, so, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward yeah. to it. I'm jealous of your ability to see that because I'm gonna. It's going to be a couple of weeks before I can get to see it. But this is one of the ones. There's that been I a am couple of early screenings. I mean, it's out as from Friday, but um, as yeah. I say, I need to review it on the radio in the morning. So this was the yeah. only chance I had to go and see it. Yeah. Okie dokie. Um, also out this week, uh, I think it opens tomorrow. Uh, so today, when this podcast will be released, is Back to Black, which um, I've seen quite a bit of hatred on Twitter or X, as it's called now, for uh, for this film. But it's basically a, a biopic or biopic, I should say, of um, her name's gone completely. Amy, Amy Whitehouse. Whitehouse. <laughs> yes. Uh, but I thought from the trailer this looked a good one. So. Um, I'm, Have you again, guys I'm... seen the documentary, Amy? Yeah. It came out a few years ago. I mean, that was. No, I, I never did. No. That's fantastic. No. The documentary. I remember seeing that and sitting in my cinema seat and crying all through the end credits. Right. Uh, right. Of Amy. Yeah. It, what a waste of a life and an incredible talent. Indeed. The documentary Indeed. is deeply moving. So it'd be yeah. interesting to see. I think a lot of her fans have complained about the casting of this one and that the voice isn't right. Yeah. That's been well, the main complaint about I've, this. Yeah, I think the girl does her, all her own singing in the role, doesn't she? Uh, rather than using backing tracks that was the take with the uh, Bob Marley, the recent Bob Marley film. So, but then uh, Taron Egerton right, himself did all his own singing in Rocket Man, and yeah, Robbie Malik did, yeah. did his own singing in Bohemian Rhapsody. They're not trying to imitate; they're just portraying the person. I think. Yeah, yeah. And I from the trailer, I could, I could go on a whole rant about job. this. Let's not. Okay, <laughs> well, let's rant about it when we've seen the film. All right. Um, yeah, so uh, any other business? Uh, I think, Scott, you um, saw that the Oscars have got a date for next year. Yeah, so Andy's favourite uh, subject. <laughs> uh, it's my favourite the... night of the year. I get to go to bed really early. <laughs> get a great night's sleep. Uh, so, yeah, next year's the Oscars for 2025 have been announced as Sunday the 2nd of March. So one okay. we can put in our diaries to get the night off work or the day off work the next day maybe <laughs> um a couple other Anything bits of news that yeah. i've noticed this week um one is that margot robbie's company is going to produce a film about monopoly again yeah. like oh. when barbie was announced no idea what this is going to be but i'm curious already um love it it, oh, it, so many good ideas. Could be any, I bet it'll like, be yeah. an American Monopoly and not the London one or, you know, yeah. the Star Wars Monopoly. I mean, Monopoly there's so many or... versions. Surely they've got to go classic, don't Ooh, they? Oh, Star Wars Monopoly. Now we're talking. Hang on. <laughs> this is getting better. That's a danger, isn't it? That's a danger, yeah. Mm. yeah. And last little bit of news that I actually saw while we were filming this today, loosely film-related, but star of The Naked Gun and Towering Inferno O.J. Simpson has passed away today yeah, after a battle with cancer. Yeah, yeah. I did I see that. Two great films. Anything need, more needs to be said, but 
he was in movies and I thought it was worth yep. mentioning. No, that was well worth mentioning, yes. Yeah. Um any other air be from anybody else? Or can Andy rush off and get his popcorn that's gonna get shaken out of his <laughs> box? <laughs> I don't like popcorn anyway. <laughs> yeah. Good man. Okay, just, well, uh, well, well yeah, oh. we can all uh, I was just gonna say, um I'm seeing it tomorrow we can all you know watch another film that really feels like it could come true and i don't like it oh yeah that's true that's true <laughs> what's that i can civil I war can genuinely see some of these oh, civil war. Films oh, right. yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 emma's gonna go up and watch the watch the first omen on disney plus <laughs> i i will go i will watch the first first omen <laughs> on disney plus i promise I'm, no you can <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, uh, thanks for joining, and um, we will see you again next week for some more Flickering Dreams. Don't forget to subscribe and like uh, this podcast, and um, we'll see you soon. Thanks very much. Thank you so much for listening or watching Flickering Dreams. You can find the video version on YouTube and the audio version on all major podcast platforms. And don't forget to subscribe so you can get each of the weekly episodes as they are released. We'll see you at the movies.